Hi, I'm Matt from MTech and Motorsport Electronics, and in this video we're going to be talking about how VVT works on a modern fuel-injected engine. So first things first, what is VVT? Well, we're going to be covering the Focus ST170, as that is the area of VVT that we've designed this product for, but also it's one of the more fundamental and simple methods of VVT control. In this video, we're going to be covering constantly variable valve timing, not something like uh, VTEC, which is used on a Honda engine, which is a simple change of cam profile. VVT in this, in this terminology is variable valve timing, which is constantly variable, where the ECU can actually change the angle of the peak point of the cam with relation to the crankshaft. So first things first, what does this mean in terms of an engine's drivability and its power? Well, if you've ever played with cams and fitting cam timing or changing cam timing on an engine or upgraded cams, you'll know that with a fixed cam configuration, we tend to get the following. So we have our dyno graph, and this is power in BHP, and this is RPM. And let's just say we've got a straightforward ZTEC engine on throttle bodies, for example, and the cam timing is fixed. So our graph might look like that, okay? Now what we can do is we can actually advance the cam timing if we so wish. And by changing the cam timing, you change the point at which the valve opens in relation to the crankshaft. And generally speaking, you work with a, with a twin head, with a twin cam engine, you'll start with the inlet cam and the exhaust cam. So in this example, we're not gonna go into, into full cam tuning here, we're just gonna go into the basics of its application in regards to VVT. If we advance the cam, what will happen is we'll move the peak power of the engine, this point here, further up, uh, sorry, closer to the start of the rev range. So the power curve might then look like this. And likewise, if we retard the cam by a few degrees, the power curve might look like this. Okay, so you can see some engineering thought here. What engineers have said is, well, let's vary the cam angle with respect to RPM, such that when we actually run the engine, we can, uh, we can have the cam advanced at low speed and then start to retard the cam at higher speed to move the cam, to, move, to, to spread the power down. So with VVT control, what you actually get is the following. It would follow the same curve, the best curve it can advance, and it would go along here like this, like that. So you'd actually get a wider power band. You'd actually get the best of both worlds. You'd have an advanced cam when you want it advanced and a retarded cam when you want it retarded. Okay, so in a traditional sense, the VVT is quite a complex system to control. You need to know the position of the crank, you need to know the position of the cam, and then you need to be able to vary the position of the cam. And the way that's done on the Ford Focus ST170 engine is at the end of the camshaft, you have a vein within, within the pulley. And by varying the amount of oil pressure you allow into this pulley end, the actual cam will rotate with respect to the pulley. So the way the VVT on the ST170 works is that on the top of the engine, you have a solenoid. And oil pressure comes from the oil pump, flows into this solenoid, and based on the PWM, the pulse width modulation, and how long, how much percentage of the time this valve is open, a different amount of oil will flow into the pulleys on the end of the engine, and on the ST170, it's only on the inlet cam. And it will advance, it will allow these veins in here to rotate against the stop by filling the cavities with oil, and it will allow the camshaft to rotate in respect to this end pulley. So, first things first, what you need to do is you need to measure, using the, cam, using the crankshaft position sensor, the real position of the engine. And then, using a camshaft position sensor, which is at the other end of the engine, at the back of the block, there's a camshaft position sensor, you can then measure the absolute position of the cam. Take the difference between the two, and you have the cam advance. And, for example, from starting the engine, and with, with no oil pressure applied, we would call this zero degrees of advance. It's running factory timing. Now, the angle might be, that there will be a setup angle of where the lobe should, the peak of the cam lobe for number one should be in relation to the crank, but we ignore that. All we're worried about is the advance. So what we've done at ME is we've designed this new system called the VVT Pro, and it takes in the, crank, the camshaft sensor input, and it has a Y-splitter cable which takes in the crankshaft uh, signal, because obviously that might be used by another aftermarket management system, or a mega jolt, or a nodis, or something that's just doing ignition only. And then it has an output to drive the solenoid. Now in traditional sense, what would happen is 
if with some ECUs like an MX600, for example, they don't actually have the software within the ECUs to accurately position the camshaft. And what most controllers would do, such as a Megajol or our Nodis system, without the VBT Pro, is it would simply switch the cam on, it would switch that solenoid on at a certain RPM. So once we've finished writing the software to accurately target the cam position, before going on to the mapping side of things, what we did was we simulated locking the cam at different, different angles. And we actually put all of these graphs online on our website and they're linked down below. What we tried to do is emulate what the typical user would do. So you've got three options really when using an S, or, or you had three options when using an ST170 before the VVT Pro came along. The first was don't run VVT at all, just leave the solenoid unconnected. And that gave a very flat engine. When we did the test on our OEM car, if I draw on the line of a standard Focus ST170, that it might look like that. If you ran with the VVT solenoid disconnected, so you ran no cam advance whatsoever, the cam was in its rest state, the power was, was pretty poor. It was, it was like that, to be honest with you. I mean, 40 horsepower drop. So not really the option most take. The second option you can do with the VVT, and up till now, probably the most common, cheapest and most effective, was to turn the VVT fully on at a certain voltage, usually using a switch act on the ECU. So you might set it to turn on when the RPM, for example, is at 2000 revs. Some say 1500, some say 3000, it doesn't matter, but the fact is, is you would turn it on at a certain point. And the graphs, as I say, are available for this. So what we did is we actually simulated this. We just, 12 volts, just put 12 volts straight into that solenoid at 1500 RPM. And let's just put... 1500 RPM there. And what we found was the cam was incredibly flat like this. It followed this curve. At 1500 it spiked, hit and met the factory power, and then it just sort of tapered away like that. So you lost all this top end torque. And the reason for that is that Ford, when they control it, they do max it out at the start, but then, as I say, they do taper it back, and they bring the angle back as the, as the RPM increases. So that was that, was that method. So the third and final option that's open to most users is they can either buy some aftermarket cams which have a VVT delete or in the same way a VVT delete system which would lock the VVT pulley. So even so they disconnect the oil feed and they disconnect the solenoid and they would lock the cam into position. They might choose, for example, 10 or 20 or 30 degrees of advance. So what we did is we actually plotted locking the cam at 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 degrees so we could see how this would affect the power performance of the engine. And if I rub this line off here, and remember this green line is with, is with no cam advance at all. So if we ran, uh, and I'll go for 10 degrees advance, what we found was there was a general increase over not running it at all, but the power still wasn't, it wasn't there. It still wasn't very good. It never actually met the, the black line, the, the factory power of the s 70 at any point in the rev range. The next option people can do is they can run it at say 20 degrees of advance. And what we found with running 20 degrees of advance is, again, there was no power at the bottom end, but towards the end of the graph, maybe here, it might just touch it, maybe, and then, and then drop away again. But, you know, it still wasn't right. We lost all of this torque. All of this mid-range power was gone. I'll just change colour. Running up to 30 degrees of advance, what we found was that the power now met about halfway up the power run and then tapered away. So let's put 30 degrees on here, so we remember. And if we ran, say, 50 degrees of advance, we'd get very similar to the fully switch on method because that is the advance that the ST170 Focus Cam runs at fully advanced is about 53 degrees. And we found that it hit the black line early, hit the factory power early, and again, just tapered away. So as you can see, we extracted our curve from this that the Focus should run 50 degrees right from the get go, not at idle though. At idle, if you run that much cam advance, as I say, it will stall and then taper back to around about 20 degrees. So you, so you meet your peak power here and your peak power in these points and these points, giving you the factory performance. So it gives you that power that you, that you should be getting from cam control. Of course, being fully programmable and having a USB port on the back means you can plug it in, use the tuning software, and actually set the cam angle you want to run based on RPM and load, which can be done by throttle or manifold pressure. So if you change the length of your exhaust's primary headers or you change your induction system length, you can actually tune and place the cam in the right position. And I can say from a mapping point of view, having done mapped thousands of cars, to not have to get out of the car and adjust a vernier with spanners and being able to just press buttons on a laptop is unbelievable. You can literally vary the cam timing in real time after you tune. So you can hold the engine at a set load and speed, 
add a bit of cam advance. As it in add power, as it's taken away, you can just easily find out. There's no need to stop the engine, adjust, check, DTI, run the engine. You don't have to do any of that. You just sit in the car and tune it, and it really is phenomenal to do. The other thing as well, of course, if you're running a turbocharged engine, you can set the cam to use a scavenge effect. You can set it to, to if you have dual VVT, you can set it to overlap if you run two controllers. And in terms of what we're planning to do next, is we aim to support other vehicles like the Mazda BP engine with VVT, the Renault F4R engine, and a few other engines, uh, BMW Vanos, for example. There's a few other engines we're looking to support with this system, such that we really can control anything that's out there with VVT. If you need any more information, you can visit our website at motorsport-electronics.co.uk where the VVT Pro is currently available for £200, including the VAT. It comes with the pins and the plug, very easy to install. You simply tee it into your crank sensor so that your current management system, be that the Nodis, the Mega Jolt, the Omex, or whatever ET you have on the car, will continue to run with the crankshaft sensor. Plug in the camshaft sensor and plug in the solenoid, and you have a mapable VVT cam on the ST170 Focus. Well, I hope this, this video has been informative. Of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments below or visit our forums at Motorsport Electronics where one of, either myself or Alex will be along to answer any technical queries. Cheers.